Hello, my name is Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University Calumet. In this short presentation, I'm going to show how to use Financial Calculator to perform basic capital budgeting analysis. Here, we have two projects, A and B. Project A will cost $5,000. It's expected to generate these set of cash flows over the next five years. The uh, cash flows for Project B are also shown. Remember, to use the basic manual um, algorithm, you'd have to just simply take the present value of all the cash flows. The initial cash flow at time zero would not have to be discounted since you are determining the present value at time zero. Also remember that calculating the net present value, which really is what this is, means that you are simply adding up all the cash flows that you expected and if it is if, if it comes out to be positive you accept the project if it comes out to be negative you'd reject the project so the NPV is a cost benefits analysis if what you're expecting to earn exceeds what you're expecting to pay out then the project is good so this is the manual calculation formula right here now though I'm gonna bring up this financial calculator and this is the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus widely used in in uh, universities as well as in industry and highly recommended for those of you who wish to take the uh, Chartered Financial Analyst exam. Now uh, there are two versions of this. One version is a student version. Alright, if I may switch this over. Alright, this is a student version. Um, and uh, the version that you saw earlier is the professional version. Both are actually okay. The professional version will cost you a little bit more, but has a, a few more functions that you might like to know as I work along. So before you continue, make sure your decimal places is set to, I recommend about five decimal places to do so. You want to use a format key, which, because it is on the floor of the calculator, is a second function. So second format, and then type five if you want it to be on five decimal places and then click enter there you go and then to quit up here is a second function as well so second and quit next make sure that the payment per year is set to one alright and all you have to do is to simply adjust your uh, number of holding periods accordingly so to do so again P over Y is a second function so second and this key mine is already set to 1 but if your yours is not in, uh, in 1 then go ahead and type 1 and enter and again to quit second quit now you're all good to go now here's the rule before you use any function financial function in the calculator you want to go and exit and clear TVM as well as clear work so second clear TVM and second clear work in many cases you wouldn't really need to do that but it's a good habit to form when using this financial calculator. So now, let's calculate the values for a project A. All right. So first of all, let's do the NPV. To begin, you click the cash flow key, click it, and after you click it once, second clear work. What that does is to clear whatever NPV analysis you did previously now you're ready to go first it prompts you for CF sub zero so you type in 5000 which is this value right here so 5000 make sure you click this uh, plus minus key to put in the negative in front of it and then click enter you scroll down to C1 cash flow number one which is this guy right here so 1000 enter you scroll down to C2 bypass F1 C2 is also 1000. Enter. You scroll down to C3, bypassing F2. C3 is 2000. Enter. And you can do this up to C5. However, when you have a sequence of cash flows that are identical the way you see them here, you can actually go ahead and type in for uh, frequency for the third cash flow, which is what this is. Go ahead and type in 3 and enter. But if you ever think you might get confused in doing so, just go ahead and enter all the cash flows one after the other. But because you put in three here, you're telling the calculator that there are three occurrences of the third cash flow.
So in which case you're done. If you keep scrolling the down arrow key without putting in any other values, it's going to kick you right back to the initial one. And then you can scroll through to confirm all your entries. See, C2 is 1,000, C3 is 2,000, F3 is 3, and you're done. So at any point you can stop. Just click on the NPV key for I, which is uh, R, the cost of capital, you type in 12. All right, be careful to type in 12. Do not type in 0 0.12. 0 0.12 is understood on this calculator to mean 0.12%, which is incorrect. So 12 and enter. You scroll down, and then it prompts you to compute. So just simply click the compute key right there, and that's your NPV, which is what you see right here. So now, you can also use this calculator, the professional version, to obtain the payback period as well as the discounted payback period. The student version does not have those additional functions. So to execute the payback period, go ahead and click the arrow down key again. Now first off, it says do you want to compute the net future value, which is actually not necessary in the sense of capital budgeting. However, for good measure, just go ahead and click Compute. The net future value is the future value of all of these cash flows beginning from time zero. All right, you don't really need that, but click the down arrow again. For payback period, click Compute. It's three and a half years, which is what we've written out here. The discounted payback period will consider the present value of each of these cash flows. That present value is also based on the cost of capital of 12%, which you already entered because you use that to compute the NPV. So click the down arrow key for discounted payback. So then compute. And it says it'll take about four and a half years, a little over, to uh, get paid back when all the cash flows here are considered in terms of their present values. Now, how about the IRR, the internal rate of return? Go ahead and click the IRR key. And then since all the cash flows have already been entered, simply click Compute. And that's 15.58%, which is what you see right here. And for the MIRR, the modified internal rate of return, which, is, which can be computed on the professional version, but not on the student version, click the down arrow key, it prompts you for the reinvestment rate, which is also 12%. So 12, enter, and then scroll down, and that it gives it to you without even having you to hit the compute key. The modified internal rate of return is 14.24% approximately, and that's what you see here. So now there's one more, which is the profitability index. The BA2 Plus is not equipped to compute the profitability index. However, you can easily perform that calculation manually. And this concludes this presentation.